good morning everybody watch i just say what's going on everybody because i don't know if you're watching this in the morning i'm recording this in the morning so i've completed my orientation well somewhat completed my orientation for my new company oh, fix the tripod maybe i should just do it like this so let's just go give a rerun of what ha happened and what's been transpiring so so when i was researching trucking companies and uh like i said in some older videos um they all have their flaws even this company they all have their good and they all have their flaws none of them are perfect so as I um, did my research, I did come across um, a YouTuber that goes by Trucker B. I'm gonna put his info right here. So, and I came across his his content and his channel as I was looking up stuff about Swift. Cause at that point, um, my first choice was Swift. My second choice was KLL, KLLM. And my third choice was Stevens. And just because I said it like that, it's just because it's how I'm leading up to everything. So it was Swift, KLLM, Stevens. And because I was primarily looking for companies that had their in house uh, trucking schools. And of course, Swift does. That's and that's why I wound up going with. They sent me to Corsa County. KLLM does, and their trucking school is actually next to the Swift terminal, not the school, not the trucking school, but the terminal in Lancaster, Texas. The problem with KLLM, they have a waiting list, and I just couldn't sit around because things at the barber shop, they weren't going good, and it's just the economy. So. Um, I know I've already talked about this stuff. I just wanted for my new uh, viewers and or subscribers so they can catch up because some people will go back and watch the other videos and some won't. So that's why I'm trying to bring everything into full context and bring everything up to this. So, so the barbering thing, I love it. Still passionate about it. Still can do it. This wasn't make. This wasn't profitable. It started costing me money to be a barber versus me making money to be a barber. And when I left, now if you're watching the videos, it seemed like I left Swift and I was just off for months. But that was not the case. I always have a plan. When I do stuff, it's always a plan. It's always a plan and a thought out mission. So again. This is where I want to go. That's after I came across the Trucker B's channel. Uh, he gives great knowledge on the whole trucking industry as a whole and what's going on at current times. So as I came across his channel, I came across uh, uh, another channel. I came across Slime Pack's channel. And she's also here. What I liked about her channel, it was more detailed of what's going on currently with Prime and the whole experience. And the most glaring thing that I saw was 50,000 miles. You and a trainer in a truck. And you saw my videos with the trainer that I had and I was only with him for a week. 50,000 miles it's not impossible because people do it here all the time. It, it, it can be a long, it, it can go quick. Like you do it, knock it out in maybe four or five months, or it can be a long dra dragged out process. Cause I'm still not sure if that 50 is a combination of the student and the trainer driving or just all on the student. I think it's all on the student, but I could be wrong. So when I saw her channel and I subscribed to her channel, like I subscribed to Trucker B's and I would get the good information about the company and then I would see about the train. I'm like, man, 50,000 miles. I just, I'm just imagining being with my trainer that I had the first one I had for 50,000 miles. I'm like, no, can't do it. 
So uh, when things start going downhill with Swift, I, I immediately start looking again. I knew they were not gonna be an option because even when I called them with the little time that I spent out with Swift, they were still like, okay, well, you don't gotta do 50, but you gotta do, I think she told me either 30 or 40. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'll keep you guys, you know, you know, on my list, but I'm gonna do something else. Cause I'm like, no. And then of course the pay, the pay wasn't bad. It was better than what I made at Swift, but I'm like, man, that's a long time to be at that pay grade. Cause I still have bills. So I was like, okay. And then I started looking, thinking, okay, if I can find something dedicated, that'd be cool. Then I, I came across Snyder's. Uh, it had the Costco dedicated account open. Uh, they had a daytime and a nighttime. I just applied it, it didn't matter. I don't have any issues driving during the day. You just have to deal with more traffic. So I prefer nighttime, but whichever one they pick me for, that's what I was gonna do. So they picked me for the daytime and it was some nighttime driving too. So um, yep, so I went to Snyder. And um, Snyder, outside of it being extremely strict, and I didn't have any issues. There, I'm getting experience. That was the key. Make money, decent money to pay bills, but gain experience. Because I knew, I knew once I got my experience, I could come here and I didn't have to worry about doing 50, 40, 30, 20, 10,000 miles of training. So that's what happened. So all that, I say I said all of that to get to that. So I wanted to come here because of social media, uh, YouTube, and then me doing my research on my own about the pay and conditions of this company. I, I have desire of being an owner operator, but I know that comes with uh, its own financial burdens too. And this is one of the few companies, I'm not saying that all come, I just say a few, uh, a lot of them, they allow you to uh, lease and become an owner operator, but you can't walk away from it. With this company, you can. So you probably saying, what's the importance of that? What's the big deal with that? So the big deal is that you're an owner operator and um, you're not chasing cent per mile, you, you're chasing the percentage of the line haul here versus other companies when your company, you, you, you wanna get paid the most penny you can because your, your penny and your miles go hand in hand and that's how you get paid. It's not the same here. So you have, you have the potential to earn more money here versus the other ones and you're an owner operator, you're calling your own shots or whatever. And uh, if things, if the economy is truly bad, you can walk away from the business and it won't hurt your credit. So that's the main thing. Now I did contemplate doing this with Snyder, but Snyder's is not walk away. So even if I wasn't doing good financially, I'm still obligated because I, I signed a contract just like I did here to still pay the note weekly, regardless of if I'm hurt, sick, good week, bad week, uh, weather catastrophe going on with snow, uh, tornadoes, volcano. I'm just just trying to, you know, put put that that out there that there I could not walk away. I could walk away, but that truck was gonna go right with me in the payment and uh, the credit burden. Versus here, I can walk away or I can downgrade and become company if I want to. So that was one of the things that I liked about coming over here and. I guess it's considered mega, but it's not a mega carrier. And I say that in my eyes, a mega carrier is like Swift and Snyder, where you have so many terminals everywhere, so many drivers and trailers everywhere. Um, Prime is trying to head in that direction, but they're not there yet. So I like that. So they still, it's still some care and compassion about their their employees. And I've noticed it this whole, well, I hadn't even been here a whole week. But from being over here, I'm in the campus in and going over to that terminal, that terminal is massive, but this is their their big uh, headquarters. So it's, it's expected. I just saw how the president is visible. I've never saw the president of Snyder and uh, Swift in person. I saw him on videos, but the president of this company, he's frequently here and he's approachable. He's nice, you can talk to him, you can shake hands. He plays basketball with the people. I'm like, you know, you just, 
you don't see that at other uh, companies. So I, I do like that. And, and he, he has, a, I think, an open door policy where if there's an issue with your fleet manager, dispatcher or something, you can go talk to him. I mean, you follow the chains of command, but you can talk to him and he'll sit down and talk to you. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. So um, what I'm waiting on today, so I did not clear yesterday. So clearing means that everything as far as your background check, and that's what's holding me up. Uh, Snyder's holding me up. So uh, once Snyder confirms that I'm no longer there because per the law and DOT, I can't be on two uh, driver two companies. Even though I turned in a letter of resignation, um, I even emailed a letter of resignation. I still didn't, they still had me in the system, so. That's why I didn't clear. Uh, different people yesterday didn't clear for different things. Some were like me. Uh, they're still waiting for the former employer to uh, verify we no longer work there. Others, it was a uh, drug test or sleep study tests, physicals, and um, yeah. So today, um, I'm just gonna vlog. I didn't wanna do it. I mean, I, of course I wanna do it because I'm a YouTuber. But there's so many videos out already. But then I got to think, there's a lot of videos, but that doesn't matter to me. Just like there's so many YouTube creators, this is my journey. So at first I wasn't going to do it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just show show it from my view. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool. I'll try to do stuff differently that I didn't see on other people's channel too. I've met maybe eight or nine people here. And uh, I hang out with a guy named Robert. We met on the Greyhound bus. I hang out with him the most. Uh, he's a good dude, good father. Uh, he's he's constantly talking and uh, talking in contact with his with his sons and whatnot. And he's cool. So I, I've been really sticking to him because we met on the bus and we just hit it off. So he's also leasing too. He used to uh, do flatbed. Now he's switching to reefer with nothing new because I completed. All of this stuff. But this is great. Basically, like if, if you've ever been to high school, college, it's a printout or a syllabus of, or just say, uh, if you go on a trip, it's like a manifest of everything you can expect to do. So as you can see, I got all these checks and there's one check down here because I didn't finish that one on Wednesday that I didn't finish. So I know you, this is backwards and you can't read it, so you have to trust what I'm saying. So on the very first day, which is Monday, we met uh, Mr. Fletcher, he, he's funny. He he teaches the flatbed class. He's a flatbed instructor and he's flatbedder for life, it's in his blood. So he was cool. We meet him uh, in room C1, that's a classroom here at campus in. That was for an hour from eight to nine. Uh, then we get on the shuttle. The shuttles run from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. And um, we head over to the terminal and that's when we did our uh, physical. And I, I did my physical, passed it, no issues. I am on a CPAP and I talked about that when I was uh, at, at uh, Swift. Swift put me on it. I couldn't stand it at first, but it, it's, it's gotten better and eventually I'm gonna come off of it because I've lost a, a ton of weight. So I'm gonna wind up getting off of it. And then uh, later that day, we had to go learn about taxes and uh, stuff we can uh, write off and stuff like that. And I, I'm not pushing this on anybody, but I went ahead and signed up with, make sure I'm saying it, pronouncing the name correctly. So I signed up with them. Uh, you don't have to, but I did because the type of money that I, well, that I know, I'm not gonna say I think, the type of money I'm gonna make working over here will be the most money I legally ever made in a week and, and the most money I ever made in my life. And I just didn't wanna get audited and get in any trouble with all this money. So I hired them to ha help me with that and so they're, they're certified CPAs. So they're gonna help me with my taxes, let me know how much money 
I should be putting aside for stuff. And they also take uh, responsibility if there's an error made because they're supposed to be advising me. They're my advisor and my consultant. And I like that too. So yeah, I don't have to keep them forever, but I'm keeping them for now. Just so I can just guide my business, you know, the right way. So that was a good class. Tuesday, um, we all got up early and we had to do the simulator. I think I can, I'm gonna walk by there. All they can tell me is I can't record, but uh, if you're coming here, take the simulator seriously. I mean, I didn't take it serious because I've I've been on one at Swift. I've been on, I used one at uh, Snyder. So what I mean, I didn't take it serious. I didn't, I wasn't afraid of it. If that makes sense, I wasn't scared to get on it because I, I was already familiar. It, this, theirs were just a little bit different, but I've been on a simulator before, so it wasn't a big issue to me. So um, had I took it more serious, I probably would have made a hundred. I made an eighty on it. You have to score over a seventy. There was only one guy, he was a young guy too. He didn't. I I honestly think he would have passed it. If uh, I'm not gonna blame the instructor. But I will say the the instructor was very vague on how to take the test or whatever. When I was at Swift and Snyder, they gave me a, dem a demo before they did it. This instructor, he just stood and he talked to all, because we had a huge class. He told us that um, there is a set speed limit and there's a set time to take this test. And if you try to drive too fast, you'll fail. If you drive too slow, you'll fail. And that was it. He was a vague. He, and he said, make sure you're paying attention to everything. So the test I took at Swift and Snyder, I got a demo. And I think, I honestly think that they should have, that's my only complaint. I think he should have gave that guy a demo. That was a young dude. He was in his 20s. And um, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but to see a grown man or a grown woman crying, if you have any type of feelings, that that's going to bother you. That, that young dude was crying because and you only get two times it's not even baseball baseball you get three strikes he gave him two opportunities and the guy failed both times so like i said i used to be a former trainer so my thing was i would have gave a demo and just because you're giving a demo that doesn't mean that's the same test you have to give us because you have the ability to change it up and you know so i just would have gave a demo and the guy was confused from the beginning and I think it was kind of a language barrier thing, too, because even when I tried talking to him, just to tell me it's going to be OK, man. And um, hopefully maybe just two chances tang today and maybe you come back tomorrow, they might give you another one. But I found out they don't. You have to wait, a, I think, extended period of time or something like that. But I would have gave a demo. I would have said, is there anybody have any questions about what I just said? And somebody will say yes. And I think he would have. And then I would have showed him again, like, well, hey, this is what you do. His issue was turning on the truck and just going through the, the functions because he had a CDL, but he didn't have any experience. So he, he was in the same class as me only because he had a CDL. Now, the other class that they have here for people that don't have a CDL or a permit. So this guy just he went to a truck driving school. I'm not sure wherever he went to. And he still was going to have to go out and get training. So. I may have got off topic. So basically take the simulator class seriously. If you come in here to, to prime, ask the instructor to give a demo. And if he says he's not, make sure you tell him, well, can you at least come and show me how the, how it functions and everything. And I think that guy would have been okay. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that, that was, that was sad. Watch him cry. Um, you get two opportunities to pass that test. So take it serious. After that, it's a lunch break. And uh, one thing I don't understand or like about the process is it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think everything should either be here at the Campus Inn, which is a hotel, and we're primarily doing stuff inside of the conference rooms or whatever, or it all should be at the terminal. Because most of us, uh, there, there are a few rehires, like uh, shout out to Miss Miss Addison. She's cool. She's been helping me a lot. Uh, because primarily we're all here. Our, our common goal, of course, is to make income, take care of our family, but we need some guidance. When you're sending us here and there, 
I'm not from Missouri. I don't know about all, where I'm going. I'm just jumping on the shuttle with other people, with strangers. It, it's just, it, it's, we have this, but outside of day one and Mr. Fletcher going over stuff, there was no other human interaction to tell us where to do, where to go. Are we allowed here? Are we not allowed there? That was, it was a bunch of trial and error. It's, it's like, uh, if you've ever been out to like a big park or an inner city, and you see a bunch of pigeons just just moving around, not really knowing what they're doing, but they know they're supposed to go somewhere. That's us. So I've been primarily hanging out with Robert because me and him, we just, we figured we're going to go down, we're going to go down together. <laughs> so me and him been uh, hanging out, walking around and stuff like that. And then uh, we'll run into Miss Addison. She's a rehire. Uh, her and her husband, I believe, used to work here. And then they went to, uh, I think, Stevens. And then I think he stayed at Stevens and she, and she decided to come back here. So um, she's been helping out a lot with the process because this pretty much, this whole process outside of the tax class and the hours of service class and the slingshot class has been a self-talk class. We teach ourselves. You have the paper, you get a handout. Uh, where is it at? You get papers and you get a bunch of handout. You read them, you teach yourself. That's that's what this all this whole process has been since I've been here. Here's the handout, read it, figure it out on y'all. I hate to sound like that, and here's another one. Here's your handout, read it, take all these CBTs, figure it out, y'all. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, I just, I think it should be a more streamlined, structured, I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. I want the prime people to get upset with me. It's just my opinion. I just think that uh, it should be more uh, human interaction and you should have it at one place. All the back and forth and then, it does sound like I'm complaining. Have training at one place, one general place, one big room or break it off. They have those rooms where you can put the floating uh, walls to separate them, have it in one place uh, too much back and forth, people can get lost. That terminal is huge. Uh, I got off at one time, um, I'm thinking I'm at the terminal, I'm at the plaza. And then that's like a two hour walk to get back to the, uh, I mean not two hour, two mile walk from the plaza to over to the Millennium Building. So if you have it in one place, people won't get lost. I got lost. If I got lost, other people got lost. Like I said, Snyder to confirm with Prime that I'm no longer an employee and then I'll be able to get my badge and I can walk around. Oh, and that's another thing. You have to let us know when you have the white. Let's see if I can. Yeah. When you have the white badge, I mean, most of y'all know my, my real name anyway. I'm Tommy Jr., but most people know Tommy. Most people know Junior. Few people know TJ. But yeah, so and as you can see, I'm a AC. So we, you, you have this white badge. It's only good over at the um, terminal at the Millennium Building uh, during normal business hours. After five, it's not good. I mean, it's no good. And they won't even let you in. And the shuttle won't even take you over there. So, because I think that's when security uh, makes their rounds or whatever. So at that point, everything is, you have to have a real badge to swipe in, a purple badge or a green badge. This one is just a sheet of paper off a copy machine. So, but me and Robert found that out by trial and error. We didn't know, we went over there. We were like, hey, we're gonna go over here and, and uh, eat dinner. And uh, cause they have some good food. That North Star Grill is really good. It's really good. I'm trying to stay away from it. My wife said I'm a, I'm a game the freshman 15 if I keep eating like I am. I've been eating shrimp, 
french fries rob been eating he was eating steak and shrimp he ate it twice and baked potato i said man but he he got a high metabolism i'm like dude if you didn't have that metabolism you'd be big as me <laughs> he, he he's small but he been eating uh shrimp uh shrimp and steak so um yeah just if we had a human to tell us hey at this point the shuttle dri drivers are not gonna let you off here and you can't even enter the building at this time with this badge we would have known that but that's not on this paper and we wasn't told it or if we were i didn't hear it i hear everything they did give us this map The map doesn't do it justice. That place is huge. Um, if you ever been to a community college, I won't say it's big like a university, but it's about as big as a community college. I'll say that. And then, uh, so I got those forms of paper and I got this. You see that circle, so you see where I'm at. I'm in room, I'm in the C building, C building, room 265. I'm not worried about you kidnapping me or nothing because when you see this video, I won't even be here anymore. <laughs> like I said, I film them in the moment, but I don't release them in the moment. Just for safety reasons and obviously safety reasons. Yeah, I'm gonna take you with me and we're gonna go out and do some vlogging today. So stay tuned.